got you there. Oh, that's good. Archery forceps. You give two archery forceps. Two. Right. to come here at 10 o'clock this morning. I've got Nobody wants to go to hospital, but the chances are that any of us could at any time. We're all potential patients, and if we become ill or if we have an accident, whether we like it or not, suddenly we're dependent on a team of people whose aim is to care for us and to help us. Nurses are important members of this team. Today, they're professionals in their own right, responsible for the total nursing care of their patients. A big change from earlier times when they were often seen as handmaidens of a doctor, as one doctor explains. Well, in the old days, there would be the consultant and the matron, and then <coughs> the doctors and the nurses, and at the very bottom would be the patients. I mean, if the matron yeah, said, do this, the, the nurse would do it. It's a change from the old way that nursing care used to be organised, which was that the most junior nurse spent all her time in the sluice scrubbing bedpans, and the sister spent all her time going round with the consultant, to realising that people appreciate having one nurse to look after them for a lot of the time. And it's much more interesting and more rewarding for the nurse, and better for the patient. It's very different from how I envisaged it to start with. I have far more responsibility now, than I'd ever thought. Um, I didn't realise how involved you got um, with the job, uh, what knowledge was required from you, that there was as much depth to it, really. Learning to make decisions about patient care begins in the School of Nursing. These decisions require a thorough understanding of the way the human body works. An injection of atropine. What anatomy and physiology would you there is a lot to learn. These students are looking at the effects of medication given to patients before an operation. Work in the lecture room is combined with first-hand experience. And during their three-year training, students like Fiona spend much of their time on the ward. And Mrs. Gold, lady, lady in room two in the cubicle, yeah. she's going down for a laparotomy this afternoon. Now she's on her camera. With a qualified nurse, Fiona goes over the preparation of one of her patients for an operation. Check your name, Band. Edith Gold. K four six seven one eight. That's lovely. With a staff nurse present, Fiona gives the injection. In this way, classroom theory and practice come together. With any toes for us. If we're giving atropine, I wonder how you would explain the actual action of atropine. It interrupts the action of acetylcholine at the receptor site and dampens down the action of the parasympathetic, increasing the action of the sympathetic. Now you put it on, press firmly on the top, right? At a later stage in her training, Fiona will spend some time in the operating theatre. She'll receive instruction and support from the qualified nursing staff of the surgical team. And you take your knife back to the table and get ready with the second clean knife and the diameter me back into the quiver that's all right i don't think that you could be a good nurse without having the theoretical knowledge behind your practical work what you're actually going to do on the ward has to be backed up the whole time by the theoretical side of things to know what is normal, what is abnormal, what's just the effect of a drug that you've given that is perfectly all right, what to report to the doctor. That's where your knowledge is very important. And attach that onto the tubing. Put the fluid all the way through the tubing until it comes to the end. We attach a label to that mm -hmm. to allow us to know what's inside there. She's During her three-year training, the nurse is taught to take an increasing role in the nursing management of the patient so that when she's qualified, she can take on full responsibility. She's a decision maker, um, and I think as time goes by, it's becoming more of a decision maker about their care, um, and she's responsible for the outcome of the care. OK. Ready? 
it's never a boring job. It's sometimes very rewarding. Sometimes it's not rewarding at all, but sometimes you do feel that you've really helped somebody in what to them is a really major crisis in their life. Somebody's rung up your sister, yeah. and uh, she's going to come up, but she's obviously got a few things to sort out first, but she's on the way. Okay, okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to look at your bad leg. Okay, I'm going to let this splint down, which will be a bit painful. Don't worry if you will. It doesn't matter. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Mm. Well done. Mm. Looks as though you've definitely broken your leg. Oh, feels like it. And you've got a bit of a cut on there as well, so you'll need to be plastered. So now get the doctor in to have a look at it and we'll do Certainly some in casualty, we very much work as a team mm -hmm. and the medical staff make medical decisions, but they're very much dependent on what we tell them. Um, for example, I receive patients from the ambulance crews and the doctors will say, which patient do I need to see first? And they accept that I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I wasn't knocked unconscious. He's got a lot of pain in his right leg. Mm -hmm. um, the ambulance crew thought he looked a bit shocked at the scene, but his observations are fine. Mm. BP 120, 18, mm. pulse 80. So they put a drip up, but I've slowed it down just to keep the vein open. Mm -hmm. The old sort of relationship where the doctor gave the orders to the nurse, that, that relationship is breaking down. Nurses, in fact, perform much better if they're given the opportunity to use their initiative, if they're given the opportunity to question what was done in the past um, because w we're seeing that that old ways of working are perhaps not not the best ways of working because the doctors come and go and change quite frequently because they get to have to get experience here people who nursing staff are here all the time really do know how the department should run which patients are priorities and you have to be a, you have to be a bit pushy to work here it's no use being terribly quiet and retiring because you've got to bully doctors sometimes they come and see this patient we only works as a team you know the doctors listen to what we say we listen to what they say what have you been up to then you've got a lot of pain at the moment yeah not to worry we'll get you into bed in a minute and make you more comfortable yeah. with any road traffic accident regardless of whether their injuries are serious or not the patient is always shocked primarily they need a lot of reassurance they're frightened, they don't know what's happened to them, or even if they do, they still are frightened of possible consequences. Can I have a drink, please? Not at the moment, no. You know you've got this pain in your tummy, yeah. you were complaining about it before. The doctors think the An important part of the nurse's role is to build up a close relationship with each individual patient in her care. It makes it a lot closer relationship between the nurse and the patient because they get to know their nurse and depend on them more and probably confide in them more as well. And d d does that help the getting better? I'm sure it does. Sure it does. But obviously the psychosocial aspects, the um, emotional, social needs of patients, you're well aware how di much more difficult they can be to, to find out the problems. And Nursing care now looks at the whole patient. So Body and mind Graham are no longer separated. At the school, Graham, a third-year student, discusses a patient on his ward who's had a stroke which has affected one side of his body. We're gonna, just going to have to come to terms, and he's got to come to terms with the fact that he will always have a diminished side and that he'll have to accept that his body involves one hand, one arm. How's the arm? All right. It's not hurting? No. Shoulder all right? Yeah. Yeah? Let's see you move it a little bit. That's not bad, is it? Grip. He sees a drink on that side, and you can actually see that mentally he thinks, oh, I've got to put my arm out there, but he can't do it. He has to take this one. It's, it's a, a minor frustration, I'm sure, but it, it must build. You think you'll be able to adjust to just walking with, with one leg? Yeah. And using the wheelchair around the house? Yeah. The blanket bath isn't just a practical task. It's, it's a means of me being able to assess somebody, to be able to look at them. We can use that 20 minute exchange, to talk to them about it, to actually sit down and find out their fears, allow them to express their fears, to talk through a situation which is very personal to somebody. His interaction actually with his wife and with his children is very loving. 
I think that they all sort of care enough about each other, that they will be aware of what's happened to him. And the wife especially, I mean, we've, we've talked about this, this sort of problems that he's having. And she's, she's obviously very understanding that she doesn't want to sort of emasculate him by, by taking over everything. If we can get into the stage where he can handle a wheelchair by himself. Yes, mm. that's what and I want to do. And we'll be able to get, do, get yeah. home and get around a little bit. Yeah, then he's got to help himself though a lot, hasn't he? Yes, I mean the thing with having uh, someone who's had a stroke, it really is self-motivation. Yeah. Some important decisions involving the community services have to be made before the patient leaves the hospital. With the night sister, Graham explores some of the ways these decisions might be reached. Another thing um, I think might be an idea would be to ask the health sister to call him as well and perhaps meet Mrs. Uh, Groves before. Yes, we could, we could actually could we arrange that to meet at the home or to meet on the ward. Either. Perfectly Possibly possible. If we again, were all there, we could actually have them. That's right. Again, we could arrange it through the district nurse liaison. Now that we've checked, the uh, fluid is clear. That the prescription, that this bag matches up with the prescription, mm -hmm. the expiry date, and the patient's name band. Yes. By the time she's reached her third year of training, now the owner is able to pass on her skills to first-year students. We want to touch the end of this tube, which is going into sterile fluid. All right. Now when you're putting this in, it needs to be pushed quite hard, firmly. Check that you haven't pierced the bag on the inside. All right? You have to be able to um, look at the whole person or to step in to be able to fulfill a need for somebody. We hopefully look at a person now as slightly more than an appendix in bed five or a CVA in bed six. We hopefully look at the effect of their illness upon their social status, what's happening to them in their family due to their illness. I mean, is it anything I can help with? I shouldn't think so. Do you understand how long you may have to take off work? Why, well, I've heard, but I haven't actually been told. Probably be sort of four to six weeks of taking it easy. I think partly it's becoming recognised that you can't say, well, this person's got a physical illness and that their emotions have nothing to do with it because the essence of nursing care is to help them marry the emotions and the physical care. And what is this operation then? He might not need to have an operation. But we think he might have damaged some of his internal organs. We have to keep an eye. Patients' relatives also have their fears and anxieties. Nursing care involves the family as well. When his sister came in, I realised that she was frightened as well. And she also needed a lot of reassurance. He'd been in an accident and she didn't quite know what had happened to him. I think it's quite difficult to learn how to react towards them and not become over-emotional in return. Because it, you have to learn to equate the way they're feeling, the way they're speaking to you. And I think that's quite hard and it, it takes a lot of experience to learn it. How did you learn it, something like that? By experience, I think, and watching others, or listening to others, rather, anyway. If you could uh, get something for us, I'd just have a look at a chart. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Okay. Thanks very much. Cheers, sure. thanks. I had a lady whose um, condition um, initially had been improving. She was on all the right treatment for her condition, but unfortunately, um, after a while, it was apparent that in fact she wasn't going to get better. Very, very nice. I mean, I haven't spent as much time with her as I'd like to. I don't think you should blame her. Her brother, who's a very caring chap, who'd been up to see her quite often, was puzzled by the fact that she'd seemed to be getting better. And then I had to tell him that, um, that things were not getting better and that probably she was going to die. And that's a very difficult thing to do. We'll have a cup of tea and uh, I'll explain things for you a bit. So how do nurses cope with death? You never know what to say. I don't think you ever do. It's something that can't be taught. Um, it's something that you go by instinct, but it, that leaves you very vulnerable um, because there's no right thing to do or say. That's very difficult. It's not something you can you acquire in five minutes and it does tend to be more senior nurses who will do it and they'll try and work with juniors so that they can see what you're doing. If it is an expected death, 
it's not trauma traumatic. It can be very sad, especially if you've got very close to them. Um, but if they're sort of elderly and it's expected, no. But if it's somebody who's young and it's totally unexpected, it's very traumatic. Yes. You can go home and cry. <laughs> okay. You just rest with your arms down both sides. Okay? Mm-hmm. You are taught to deal with stress. I mean, what is stressful for a first-year student isn't for a staff nurse. You're taught throughout your training to deal with that stress, and that's also part of the love of the job. Have you ever had anything like this before? It can make a lot of demands on you that you sometimes think you can't cope with anymore, but you usually do. It's a very tiring job. It's very physically hard, and you have to be able to think on your feet, even though your feet are actually killing you because you've been on them for nine hours. Anyway, the trip should be down um, tomorrow. I don't think any of us are martyrs. I don't think we'd do it without getting something back. And you get a lot back. And you become a lot closer to people. You see them go home and you get to know their families and a lot about them, become very close to them. Has Dad got that? The estimate? Has Dad got the estimate? And it's nice to be able to see the majority of them anyway getting up and getting better and seeing the progress of the healing of a broken bone. Sometimes we send patients home before it's completely healed, but we do occasionally have patients in for three or four months until it's all completely better. That's quite satisfying. Does a nurse's training stop at, at the end of their three-year course? No, it doesn't. There are a lot of opportunities to go into various fields of nursing. There are a lot of courses available. Um, there's orthopaedic nursing, which I did myself. There's ophthalmic nursing children's nursing, there's lists endless. It's the intangibles, people's faces, their expressions, their being able to help, being able to give, I mean that's always a nice feeling. People come in very ill, within a few minutes you can make them feel very much better and also they, you get a lot of people say well I'm in good hands now and you get quite a bit of buzz out of that. It's that ability to give something to somebody when they're very much in need that makes you feel good. <laughs>